Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Hypermesh Basic to Advanced. In this video, we are going to see topography optimization using Hypermesh and Optistruct. So, to have a bit of a background about my channel and website. So, I make videos and blogs related to Hypermesh and FEA. So, if you want to see more of my content, you can visit my website Hypermesh Basic to Advanced.in, which I will put in the description and you can check out my other videos on my channel okay so uh, let's get started with this tutorial so in this video we are going to perform topography optimization and we are going to use the same model that we used in topology optimization okay so the only difference this time will be we'll be using a 2d mesh instead of a 3d mesh Okay, so if you have not seen my topology optimization video, I will link it in the description. Uh, you can check it out from there. Okay, so basically we have a bracket like this. If you can see here, uh, we had a bracket like this. So we'll be performing topography optimization in this bracket. Okay, so I'll just hide this geometry okay so if you can see i've already meshed the bracket with 2d quad elements okay so this yellow areas uh, are the non-design areas and the blue areas are the design areas okay so what we are basically going to do is we are going to fix the these four holes as you can see i have applied the constraint i have constrained all the degrees of freedom one two three four five six on all these four holes okay and then we are going to apply a force of 3000 newton on these two holes as you can see i have applied a force of 3000 newton on these two holes okay next uh, we are going to create properties for these 2D elements. So I have already created uh, properties for these 2D elements. Uh, if you go down here, yeah. So here is the properties. So we have created two properties. One is design property and non-design property. So design property is uh, for this blue part that is the design component and yellow is the non-design property that is for the non-design component. So I have used the card image as P shell and the thickness of these uh, elements will be 2 okay so if you are thinking what is design and non-design property uh, so it's basically linked to design and non-design component so non design and non-design uh, component we basically segregate uh, before optimizing uh, any component we segregate into design and non-design component so that the areas which we don't want to modify don't get modified so these non-design components are the areas which we don't want to get modified during the optimization. So we have kept them under the non-design component and the design component is the area which can be modified during optimization. Okay, so uh, we have meshed the model and we have meshed the component. We have created the properties. So the design and non-design properties will have the same thickness uh, 2 and 2 here as you can see okay so next we will create the material so i have already created a material so the material we'll use here will be steel as the values of eg and nu are present by default okay so the material is there property is there component is there right so next we'll be creating load collectors uh, which i have already created as showed you constrained this uh, non design region here I have constrained all the degrees of freedom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for all these four holes 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and I have applied a force of 3000 Newton in the negative y direction as you can see here. Okay, on these two holes. So we have already created the load collectors. Now, after materials, properties, and load collectors, we have to create a load step. Uh, I'll tell you why it's important. Okay, so we'll use the load step. Uh, we'll use linear static load step for this optimization okay so this analysis type will set to linear static and will reference the constraint and the load load collector and the spc and the load field respectively okay so now that we have the meshed component material property load step and load collectors 
now we have to proceed with uh, setting up the variables for the optimization so how we'll do that so for that we can go to analysis okay and then we can go to optimization here okay so we'll click on optimization here okay now we are going to perform topography optimization so we have an option for topography here as you can see uh, we need topology so we'll click on topography then we'll go to create okay so i've already created a design variable for topography optimization and named it topo optf if you can see here so i will name the design variable as topo opt here and then we have a properties select selecting field here so we'll just click on this and we'll select the design property here okay because this is the property that we want to modify okay so we have to select the design property basically the property which we want to uh, property which is uh, related to the component that we want to modify okay so we'll select the design property here and then we'll click on return okay so we'll create the design variable like this okay uh, but this is not all so we have to give some additional parameters under the design variable which we can give by going to beat parameters here if you see so we have to select the design variable here okay so it was topo opti so now we have to provide some minimum width uh, of this speed so for for this tutorial for this time being i have put it as 6 draw angle i have kept it as default and draw height i have kept it as 4 okay and then we can assign the draw direction okay so for the time being i have kept it normal to elements you can just toggle it and uh, keep any custom direction if you want but for this tutorial we will keep it as normal to elements okay so this is the creation of topography variable for topography optimization okay uh, next we'll click on return so we have created topography variable now we have to create the responses uh, for the optimization so we'll go to responses here click on responses again i have created the responses here if you can see me uh, yeah, optimization responses okay so i have already created the displacement response so for displace i have named this as displacement response so the response time type for this will be static displacement okay and then we have to select the nodes uh, for this response type so the node here which we will select will be the point of application of the load so as you can see the load is applied to this rb2 element which i have created which is connecting these two holes okay the nodes of these two holes so we'll select this as the node yeah so it's selecting that okay then we can click on create and it will create uh, one more thing before that so we have to select the direction of the displacement that is the degree of the freedom so for this tutorial i've kept it as degree of freedom to that is the y displacement you can play around with it and you can check for different degrees of freedom so or the total displacement if you wish so this can be exercise which you can form on your own to just uh, understand it a little better okay but for this tutorial i have kept the degree of displacement and degree of this uh, freedom too for this tutorial okay so this is how you create a displace uh, what you call it, response for optimization okay next uh, we have to create constraints but for this tutorial i am not using any constraints uh, but if you have seen my topology optimization video i had created some constraints for topology op optimization but for this tutorial i am not using any constraints okay it's free so next we have to create objectives so what is objective so if we if we are performing any optimization there is always an objective associated with it so for this uh, we are trying to minimize the displacement response the response which we have created okay so we need to minimize the displacement we don't want uh, this bracket to be displaced too much when this um, uh, load of 3000 newton is applied so basically we are trying to minimize so here we'll select minimize and we'll select the response as displacement response okay then we have to select the load step associated with the uh, with the response so it will be static analysis load case okay which we had created here if you can see static analysis okay then we'll click on create and it will get created 
so there's already a objective variable as you can see here objective okay so this is basically how you create uh, the optimization variables for topography okay so now we have the mesh model we have properties and materials assigned uh, we have the load step load collector and design variables created okay so next uh, we have everything set up so basically we can proceed to uh, perform the analysis uh, perform the optimization sorry so we can go to optistruct here okay uh, and if you're not seeing this optistruct here so what you can do you can go to preferences here if you see here preferences then you can click on that and you can go to user profiles and there you can select uh, optistruct from the available options okay then it will appear here okay so for me it's here so i'll go to optistruct okay so this is file name so export options will keep as all run options since we are performing optimization we'll keep it optimization otherwise if you're performing analysis you can keep it as analysis but for this tutorial since we are performing optimization we'll keep it as optimization memory options will keep as default okay so we'll proceed to run the optimization and see the output results so for that we'll just click on this optistruct okay and we'll click on yes okay so once you click on optistruct a pop-up window like this will appear so basically it will show you the progress so if you can see so you know it's job is completed now okay so we have a message for the job here optimization has converged feasible design all constraints satisfied and we are not given any constraints anyway okay so this basically means that uh, optimization has converged that it was successful they, they have find, found a optimal shape or optimal topography for the bracket okay so to view the results uh, we can either go to results or we can click this drop down uh, beside view and we can go to the output file that data will be in text format so to see it in visual format visual format we'll go to results okay okay so once we click the results uh, hyperview window will open like this if you can see here okay so we have the bracket here okay so if you see here yeah so we have the mesh model of the bracket here if, we, if you can see here in the result type we have shape change we have topography uh, concave convex here click apply okay it's the same thing nothing result okay so basically we are in iteration zero here so we'll proceed to iteration three and we'll see the changes okay so there are some changes if you can see here from the contour plot shape change magnitude okay so if you see here so there's change in this colored area apart from this blue area so what i'll do is just make it white so that we don't have a problem okay so this white areas are where there's no changes and this colored areas are where there are changes okay so if you go to iso and we click on apply these are the areas which you can see where there are changes okay so what if we want to view how the shape has changed so for that let me maximize the displacement suppose 20 we'll make this as 20 click on apply okay this seems to be too much we we'll make it 10 and we'll click on apply okay so as you can see uh previously was uh, Form shape we keep as wireframe to keep as a reference. So if you see the wireframe is the old shape, okay, old shape of the bracket, and uh, the solid or this colored part is the new shape of the bracket. If you can see, there's a slight change in the shape of the bracket on the colored regions, 
as you can see from here this wireframe is here and there's a this has come a bit forward so this is the suggested suggested shape by the topography optimization algorithm here uh, for the bad bracket okay so this is for the wide displacement that we have done so you can try it out for other displace, displacements as i have said before you can try it out for degree of freedom one or total displacement etc and you can see how the results are changing okay so this is the basic uh, topography optimization uh, how you can perform it simply uh, you can also try out to put some constraints if you want uh, to better suit your needs so basically the process remains the same for topology and topography optimization you have create, you need to have the mesh model with the properties materials uh, load cases and load collectors created and you have to create the design variables for topology or topography optimization and then you have to create the response constraint and object okay so this is all for this video uh, hope you like this video uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe uh, like i put a lot of effort in making these videos so it would be good if you could just subscribe to the channel if it's adding value and if you're learning something uh, and you can follow my facebook and instagram page i post there uh, regularly about my blogs and videos and any other thing uh, related to fe and a hypermesh okay so thank you all See you all in the next video. Bye.